that, right, out there on those events, and uh, some of you found the one thing you're good at, so wonderful. We've had a good time, though, and uh, we've eaten, and so now we get to hear from, uh, from Chad Shearer, and uh, some of you, have, how many of you, this is your first time here in Chad? Would you raise your hand? All right, that's a good, good group, amen, good. Well, we're glad to have him, and uh, we're glad to have you here tonight, and uh, it's going to be an intro video, and then Chad will come up and begin his seminar. Chad Shear grew up hunting and fishing in the mountains of Montana. He has been an outfitter and guide for the last 29 years. Chad has a passion for calling in elk and has won every major elk calling competition in the United States and is a world champion and two-time Eastern U.S. champion. Chad has hunted on five continents and extensively around the world. Besides hunting, Chad is an advocate for wildlife conservation and serves on the board of directors for the Mule Deer Foundation and is a life member of the NRA. Chad and his family host the award-winning television show, Shoot Straight. More importantly than any of these accomplishments, Chad is a husband to Marsha and a dad to Walker and Wyatt. Marsha Shear loves the mountains of Montana, but grew up in the hills of Tennessee. She joked she was hunting for a husband, now she hunts with her husband. She has been a licensed Montana guide for over 20 years. Marsha enjoys getting hunters involved in the outdoors and also sharing tips on how to cook wild game as she hosts Shoot Straight's Recipes from the Field. Marsha was the first lady to be put on the CVA Pro staff and has hunted and fished around the world from New Zealand to Africa and many destinations in between. As she says, shoot like a girl, try to keep up. Walker Shear grew up following in the family business, hunting and fishing around the world. He started at age three and has been an avid outdoorsman ever since. Walker is now a licensed Montana guide and the executive editor and head videographer for Shoot Straight TV. But when he's not behind the camera, you'll find him enjoying the sport as much as anyone else. Whether he's hunting caiman in the Amazon or elk in the big sky country, he loves it all. His passion for bird hunting excelled when he started his business, Big Sky Bird Dogs, where he trains and sells multiple breeds of hunting dogs. If you don't find him training in the off season, he'll probably be in the backcountry with his fly rod in his hand. He has a great love for fly fishing and has waded waters from the high Arctic to South America and many places in between. Wyatt Shear loves the outdoors. Wyatt started elk calling at a young age and has won numerous elk calling competitions, including taking second place at the World Elk Calling Competition. Wyatt loves the turkey hunt and completed his turkey grand slam at age 11. He has taken a number of elk with his rifle and bow. He enjoys scouting and searching for new ground to hunt, along with taking care of predator control too. Wyatt is very passionate about his horses and loves team roping. He spends hours riding and roping while competing at rodeos. Wyatt has the goal of roping on a professional level, competing in PRCA starting in June. Now let's welcome Chad Shear of Shoot Straight TV. How's everybody doing tonight? Whew, weren't those burgers good? Let's give those cooks a big round of applause. That was awesome. helps when I turn the button on my remote. I'm like, why isn't that working? So anyway, we just got computers in Montana a couple weeks ago, so we're still figuring this stuff out. But anyway, it's good to be here. I, I heard uh, Pastor Weber ask how many was your first time here. I didn't get to see everybody's hands. I was in the corner. How many is your first time to this event here? Today? Man, that's awesome. I appreciate you coming out. We're going to have a good time. I've got my wife, Marcia, with us tonight and uh, Walker he's in Montana he got his pilot's license this last year and uh, he's doing a bunch of training up there so he just called us he flew into an area today caught a big brown trout and was flying back to with his instructor and fly some more tonight so he's training in Montana and Wyatt's down in Arizona team roping getting ready uh, for the circuit this uh, this summer up in Montana so uh, they said to tell you all hello and uh, so we're so glad you came out that was neat all the different things they had out there today, the pellet gun shooting and the shooting the bows. How many liked that? Did you enjoy that? That was a fun time out there. I walked up, one guy whew, threw that ax and bullseye right there. So it, it was awesome. I want to thank our sponsors for making it possible for us to do our TV show. We're on our 15th year doing Shoot Straight this year, and I co-hosted another show five years. 
uh, before that. So uh, 20 years doing outdoor TV, and we appreciate you, you watching, and uh, we appreciate our sponsors for all their help. And it's great to be here tonight. We love coming to Greenville and, and Pastor Butler and all the, all the people. I'll just tell you, we're out there, and they had the, the tickets for the, the shooting team, and they're going to give you one more chance at the end for that uh, raffle if you want to uh, get some of those before they draw it. They're giving a couple guns away for that also. So got lots of chance to win guns. Got CVA muzzle loaders. Got an expedition crossbow. So yeah, lots of chances. I think they're giving two different guns, a shotgun and a rifle on that. So uh, just know at the end you'll get a chance to, to do that. So people ask us, where can we watch Shoot Straight TV? Well, we're on the Pursuit channel. Uh, we're actually on, usually we're third and fourth quarter, but uh, we're on the uh, second quarter right now also. So you can watch us on that, Direct TV, uh, Dish Network. Uh, the channels are both on there. You can also uh, watch us VF Smart TV, the Samsung uh, Plus TVs. You can stream it in or Roku or any of those different options. And then, of course, if you've cut the cord, you can go on Pluto and we live stream on Pluto and uh, just all kinds of places. And then you're like, I'm still having a hard time finding you guys. Well, you can go to PursuitUpTV.com and the last 26 episodes, last two seasons are on that. You can watch that anytime you want. So that's a fun thing. So I'm going to do something here for you. Um, we're going to have Marsha come up here in a little what's that let me fix this mic that guy hold on one second sorry for this noise there that'll help so it's not rubbing thank you always wear hearing protection folks I tell you young people wear hearing protection because you don't always hear that mic rubbing if you don't so anyway <clears throat> we're gonna do something fun right now we're gonna have you take your phones out if you want. If you want to win a free buck knife, we've got some buck knives on the table. Go to Shoot Straight TV on Facebook or Instagram and put, I'm in Greenville tonight. Put that in the comments right there. She comes up here in a few minutes. She's going to bring a buck knife. This is only for the people here. If you're watching on live stream tonight, I'm sorry. Just for the people that came to the event. So, uh, Somebody's like, well, how do I find that? That little magnifying glass, put Shoot Straight TV in there. That's how you find it right there. And then, this is your opportunity to put your phones on quiet, too. That's really, put it on quiet or silence, because some of these ringtones are amazing when we get up here and I start doing the calls and I get turkeys gobbling back at me. So, uh, all right, thank you, Marcia, for doing that. Uh, I just threw that little curveball, because I love doing that you know we love our military we live in the greatest country in the world don't we we live in the greatest country and tonight we want to thank those folks that are with us i know for a fact we have a world war ii veteran with us tonight who's 97 years old every year i come here i love seeing mr woody in the back there so tonight we want to honor all our military our current military our past military and also the families of the military because we know the sacrifices are made. So if you'd please stand so we can thank you for being here. If you're unable to stand, just lift your hand. But let's thank all our military here tonight. Thank you folks for being here. I take my hat off to you folks and thank you for being here tonight. And we're proud that you, that you made it. Now calling in animals is one of my thing, favorite things to do, but also throwing free stuff out is also something I love to do. Our good folks at CVA. Yeah, they were sleeping on us. CVA hat, <clears throat> T-shirt. If it doesn't fit, I'm sorry. You can uh, find a buddy to give it to. Over here, we got people and sitting on this side. We've got to take care of them also. How many like to cook venison on the grill? I'm telling you what, I'm going to throw this out, so pay attention. <laughs> Our good friends at Pit Boss, this is original Chop House steak. I'm telling you, you put this on venison, backstrap, tenderloin, steaks, burgers, you just put it on anything, and uh, I'm going to throw some of these out here, we'll throw a few more back, to, oh, I didn't... If I throw them harder, I'm afraid I'm going to knock some people out here. Let's throw some more that way. Some more that way. Some more over there. 
If you want to grab those up front, that's wonderful. Here we go. There you go. I threw two right in your lap. There we go. But that's pretty cool stuff. Oh, I got another one here. All right, here we go. Anybody need a new sling for their rifle? You need one for your rifle? What kind of rifle? It's 26. That she needs one there? All right. Oh. Oh. Anybody shoot a muzzleloader? Your brother does? There's some muzzleloader bullets. All right. Oh, I guess. I meant to throw something, and that gal was there, and I threw it. How about this? Come on up here. I'm not going to throw these. That's a young lady right there. You got a sling? I appreciate you coming tonight. She's like, that's the guy that makes those calls. How about binos? You go hunting with that guy sitting next to you? Yeah, I know. You can spot all the animals now. All right, I love calling the animals in. Turkey season is underway here, isn't it? How many turkey hunted this morning? <laughs> He's like, man, I ate, a, I ate a burger. It's comfortable in here. I was up at 5 o'clock. We were up at 4.30 this morning looking for birds. And I'll show you some video from yesterday hunting in North Carolina. I love hunting turkeys. How many just love hunting turkeys? Oh, yeah. Marsha has been cooking turkeys amazing all these years, but she started doing them different this last year we tried a new recipe with tempura batter little almond chicken gravy whoo it's amazing stuff you just want to get every turkey you can find out there but we can do calls we're going to do a little calling right now we can do a cow elk and do a bull elk say why do you use that big o2 well it just gives it a more realistic sound that's funny isn't it it's really funny trying to do that after eating a cheeseburger out there i'm telling you <clears throat> How many bow hunters do I have in here tonight? All right, how many hunt with a muzzleloader? Rifle. How many turkey hunters? I already saw that. How many deer hunters do we have in there? All right, just see what we have for a crowd in here. That helps me know which way to go with some of these slides. I love hunting elk. How many have hunted elk in here? How many want to hunt elk in here? Oh, yeah, there's nothing better. Getting those bulls fired up. What else can we call in? Well, we can call coyotes in. That's what this guy sounded like. Also can make the squirrel sound. I'm not going to make that sound right now, but that's what he used to make. Um, you call turkeys in with it. Call your wife in with this call. Very versatile. I love calling elk and deer and turkeys, everything. We can also call in ducks and geese, get those birds coming in. Also call in geese. And then we say, take them. It's like the 4th of July. Oh, yeah. That's what we call fast food. <laughs> when you're shopping at God's grocery store, of course. So, anyway, I love calling the animals in, and we love having fun with that. Now, we're going to do a couple different things tonight. We're going to share you some new, share some new video. 
that's brand new for this year. Also, some stuff that's hot off the press from yesterday morning. I love seeing all you young people in here tonight. It's great. That's our next generation, and that's what I'm so glad you're here tonight. Now, getting new hunters involved, it's important. You need to teach them safety first. We need to teach them to respect it. I get this question all the time. How old were your kids when they started hunting? To respect firearms and I could teach them safety and they started really young in fact they took their deer first deer and turkeys when they're four and five years old going to places like Texas where you can do that and, and states that allow young hunters to hunt but not every four and five year old I'll tell you is ready to hunt some need to be 19 and 20 it just depends no just kidding it depends on the person and it depends on the training so always teach them safety first but Teach them a love for the outdoors. Even if they're not pulling the trigger, you can get them out there, have them sit in the blinds with you, and uh, it's always great. You see, today there's people's concept of hunting has been different in this day and age than it has ever been before. I don't know if you know this, but there are certain people that want to take your hunting rights away from you. They don't want you to hunt. They don't want you to have guns. The way we put food on our table, and that's one thing that it's important that you teach that next generation about that and teach it the proper way to be ethical out there. Did you realize in this last year we seen a we saw a large surge in hunters in America? Now some of you are like, oh yeah, there was more hunters out there, more competition, more competition for ammo. It's just changed things, but you know what? It was our first big surge in uprise of having more hunters in the field. And we need that as voters. We need to have more hunters out there. Why do you think there was a surge? Well, there was a disruption in the food chain at the beginning of the pandemic. Now, I get to be on the marketing team for CVA and, and Bergara. One of the things that we do is we do a lot of research. And one thing that I learned last year, last March, the number one search when it came to hunting was this when they did google searches what do you think it was no that's a good idea muzzle orders yeah because you don't have to have a 4473 to purchase that how do i hunt because when people were going to the grocery stores they were limited to one pack of meat i don't know about you but i need more than one pack of meat I was glad we had a successful season and I had elk and deer, even had buffalo in the freezer. And what did we do? We shared that with a lot of our friends. But there was a surge. In fact, what kind of surge was there? There were a million first time hunters last year. Increase, one million. Say, so, well, where do these numbers come from? For instance, Michigan had 100,000 first time hunters. Washington graduated twice as many hunter safety students than they ever have. Twice as many. That was awesome. And a lot of these places went to online classes. Idaho sold 28% more. I was just in California. I spoke California Wednesday night. I was checking California out. Their numbers were up 43,000 California. But what was interesting was there was over 38,000 people that hadn't bought a license in two years that reinstated their hunt license. Yeah, that was cool. The other thing that was neat is we had almost 7 million first-time gun buyers last year. 7 million. So you're sitting there thinking, Chad, where do I find ammo at? How many have ever had a hard time right, lately finding ammo? I'll tell you, I'm going to let you in on a little secret here in a minute when I talk about getting started. First, you have to find uh, the right rifle for you. One of the things we do is we make sure the gun fits them. We make sure that you get one that fits them. A lot of these guns, I'll show you some things here in a little bit. Make sure it fits. Make sure you mount that scope, especially if you're taking young people out, so that they get a good cheek weld on it, so that they're solid when they're, when they're aiming. Now you say, where do I get this ammo? There's a place in Montana, it's right down the road from Arms Corps Ammo called the Ammo and More Store or AmmoandMoreStore.com. And when that ammo leaves the factory, that's kind of the first stop, which is the mile down the road. And they have 308, 223, 9 mil. It does get back ordered, but I will tell you, it gets refilled quicker than a lot of these places I've seen. So that's a little, little uh, hint I'll tell you if you're looking for ammo. 
The other thing is getting started, put action behind it instead of just saying, oh, I'd like to hunt. I wish I could teach my kids. Get them out there. Say, well, I don't know anything about it. Find a mentor. Find somebody who knows about it and get out there. That's what I love about the shooting team. I was talking to Pastor Butler before the event. The shooting team here, all the stuff that they have to do, and it's great to see this. Not only are they learning how to shoot, but... They're learning all the hunter safety laws. They're learning how to identify ducks and birds. There's a lot of great things that go into it. And there's a lot of great online resources. So find somebody. And the other thing is always, always wear a safety harness, harness when you're using a tree stand. There's a lot of people have accidents. I'm going to talk about some statistics with that down a little longer later in the presentation. But I encourage you, always put that safety harness on. Well, tonight, we've got our special guest with us, all the way from Bell. She's been getting up at 4 in the morning, turkey hunting with me three days in a row, speaking every night. We went this week, we went from Atlanta to California, back to North Carolina. How are you feeling? I'm good. I have a winner. Oh, a lady won that tonight. Me Melanie Weather... Weatherington? Weatherington. Weatherington. I can't read my own writing. Where's Melanie? She's sitting right oh, behind right it. behind me. Well, I could have just handed it back to you. Do you want me to run it down there for no, you? I'm going to say I'm throwing knives in church. And Can probably I make the newspaper here in Greece. Oh, almost. Bad throw. <laughs> my bad throw. Good there job, you go. You're welcome. You're welcome. Now, Marsh and I love hunting together. She's taken some, taking some great animals from big bull elk to moose to antelope, even harpoon some alligators. Harpoons oh, yeah. Alligators. Oh, yeah. That was a fun um, moose hunt, too. Yeah. Because, you know, we have to put in for a special tag and. Yeah. But you're, you haven't got that moose tag yet, no, though. No, I have not gotten that yet. No. Yeah. Still waiting. I've been Somebody asked that. me earlier, didn't you shoot it an elk bigger than Chad? I'm like, well, it's possible. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But yeah. we have a good time. We do have a good time. That moose, I've been applying for 38 years in Montana for that tag. She drew it 20. But she was really cool about it. She let me go and help her scout. Exactly. Find it. I, you I shot you, it. Help I let pack you touch it, it and take a picture and everything. Yeah. Just like you were there. Yeah. Just like huh. you were there. I don't see myself in that picture. With Somewhere you. in there, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, I think I, I got photoshopped out. But that, that's the other good thing with having youth, a lot of youth involved. This is great seeing a lot of youth. If there are certain areas that you're interested in possibly putting in for some of these special draws, um, and you have a younger children that a child that's interested in hunting, go ahead and start putting them in so they can start acquiring some of those points and getting yep. things like that. Maybe one day you want to go to a different state or try a different hunting a different species or going out west. Go ahead and apply them so they can start getting some of those points. Then they might get it before you do. Yeah, they might. It's all good. <laughs> our, our, we've been doing that with our boys. And For example, Utah this year, Marsha and I are really close to draw. We've got 15 points built up in Utah. And so you start putting in going, hey, someday we're going to get that, that tag. Yeah. So that 15 points, that means 15 years we have been applying, you know, point per year. So that's what I'm saying. If you have some younger children that are showing the interest in the outdoors and interest in hunting, you know, continue to put them in. Some of you are thinking, 15 years? Aren't there other places? Yes. You can go to Colorado, get over-the-counter tags. There's other easier draws to put in. But if you want to take some really big animals, you need to build up because those draws can be harder. They're a little bit harder. harder. Right, now, right. whitetail hunting, honey, you love that. But let's talk about your favorites a little My bit tonight. favorites. Get to know Marsha a little oh, bit boy, better. Oh, boy, questions. Favorite bird to hunt, that would have to be a turkey. Yeah, you do like your turkey. I do like the turkey challenge, yes. The waterfowl hunting, I love watching Walker work his dogs. That's the, I love it. I love going and being there. But the hunting itself, I love the turkey hunting. So I love it when Walker doesn't have his dogs and White has to run after. White, the birds. yeah, watch him. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the favorite big game animal? Oh, there's a lot of them, but I really love the bear hunting. Yeah. I do love bear hunting. You know, Chad's. If, if you all have heard that bears don't climb tree stands, that's not true. So I can testify because someone told me. That they didn't, but they I do. I was trying to get her bear hunt. They I'm like, do. Oh no, honey. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, they do. It happens, especially if you have those leather gloves. And in certain states and areas in Canada, you can bait for bears. So sometimes our guides would go and get all that ready. Then they take those gloves that had that heavy scent on it. They climb up in my tree stand, just to make sure it's sit, to make sure things good and safe, which I was thankful for. But I found out that's why the bears like to climb the tree stands. 
because they're smelling those gloves that they've touched every ring on. So, yeah, if you go hunting with somebody, make sure they take those gloves off. It smells so good. They won't join you in the tree stand. Exactly. What about your favorite place to hunt? Favorite place, wherever I'm going next. <laughs> That's I mean, I'm just saying. Right now, it's North Carolina. <laughs> there you go. What's your favorite method? I love a muzzleloader. Yep. I do. I like the bear hunt with a muzzleloader. That one shot challenge. I like the muzzleloader. You are an adrenaline junkie. Yes. Aren't you? One piece of gear. Are you with me on this question? Yes, I'll be. Well, with if you. you're with me, I have to have all the snacks. Exactly. So you got to pack the snacks. Bring your purse. We're good for two weeks. We're good for two weeks. <laughs> got all the essentials. Yes. Yeah, so exactly. All right. Last question. Fish or hunt? Mm. I love to do both. I'll do half and half. Half the year okay. I'm fishing for those big bass. Yeah. Yeah. Fishing. Where's he at? He was showing me yeah, some. Yeah, he showed me some. I was he like, ooh, it's about time to go do that again. I know. I'm like, man. Fishing we're going to be done like, by dark. We gotta... There you go. We'll do half and half on that one. All right. Now, whitetail hunting. You like hunting whitetail. Whitetail hunting. You do have to be patient. Being, being able to stay, if you're willing to stay in the blind a little bit longer. It's how many of you ever gotten down or you're on your way out and then you see something. It's, it's it happens. It's amazing to me that people say, "Yeah, I got out of my blind. I've got my camera there," and 30 minutes later, boom, that picture came where they sent you the it message. Showed up. It showed yep. up. So definitely, if you're able to stay in the blind or stay in your tree, I'm sorry, in your tree stand longer, then that does increase your increase your odds. And always stay alert, most definitely. So sometimes uh, Chad has this white tail. Um, a call that he does but it's kind of a it's like a that kind of call. you know he's a like good right, grunt Marcia. call so it has somebody it has somebody that's alert but yeah, yeah always being alert because sometimes you think you've patterned them and they're coming in but sometimes they'll fool you and they come in a completely different way so. now let's go to south texas okay you have the opportunity to go down there and she was using a new muzzleloader cva this spring came out with a new muzzleloader the 40 caliber a 40 caliber muzzleloader means it'll shoot 2,760 feet per second, 220 grain bullet. It is fine. Drop about 24 inches at uh, 400 yards. You talk about a flat shooting muzzleloader, and you were, I think, the first lady. First lady ever to hit shoot this. it. Yes. So we're headed down to South Texas. This was just in January. We were sitting in a sitting in a. A elevated raised blind, blind, like an elevated blind, and I had my gun up, ready, and my sights on a nice buck. Just took the safety off, and the guy said, wait, wait, wait. You know how hard that is? <laughs> so I put the safety back on, but he said, wait, because there's a buck in the back that you stepped out, and he was quite a bit bigger. This will show you the hard-hitting hard power of this gun. Boom. <laughs> Nailed it. That, that, yeah, did you it hear me kind of coughing the... The muzzleloader smoke kind of blew back in on me there. The, the smell of smoke. <laughs> That's awesome. But it that that knockdown of that forty, it just. Look at the G2s on that puck. So that is probably my biggest whitetail. Had yep. a few uh, broken on there, but still, it was a nice, nice buck. It's always fun just to get out, and enjoy God's great outdoors, get to hunt with different people. So that was a good South. I started off that the year good in Texas. Awesome. Now, the other thing that Texas has, besides big whitetail, they have javelinas. And we're always trying different rifles, different calibers, trying things out. You have the new CVA Cascade mm -hmm. and using the 6.5 PRC. And I will tell you, I was quite impressed with that PRC. Were you? I was very impressed with it. We had a suppressor on it, these javelina. We were sitting in that raised blind again. We had three routes where these javelina were coming in. And this one came out right in front of us. Get clear from that other one. And notice, she is going to shoot, but how quick she reloads and gets on another one. Ready? Boom. Shoot like a girl. <laughs> right there. <laughs> so she looks out the other window, and there's another big boar off the other side. I reloaded, check that one out. <laughs> you can get two in a day, so I thought, why not? You know, I'm trying to help the ranchers out. Just got in the blind. I've got two javelina down. First time I ever shot a javelina. Look That's why you make sure they're down, though, down? before you walk up. Check out the other one now. They've this got some awesome. big teeth on them. It, is, it, was, it was a lot of fun hunting. But I tell you what, Chad, being able to shoot and use that 6.5, 
reload it really fast, get the gun out of the window, put it in the other window down the side and get it. I really think the credit, a lot of that goes to the Bagara Long Range Shooting School. We have that in Montana. And do you shoot an animal out to 1,000, 1,400 yards? No. But the target practicing, honing in on your skills, being able to make that shot that far definitely increases your, your ability and it makes you a better shot when you're out hunting at shorter distances. So there were different things like, you know, how to control your breathing, how to make sure that the gun's not canted, so your, your scopes, you know, your crosshairs are completely straight. So those things you just, when you're shooting for several days and having someone help you with that and being taught that, it really does help you be a better, be a better shooter, which is a better hunter when you're hunting. So. It does. It builds that muscle memory up. So when you get on that, boom, it's natural. The more you practice, the better you're going to get. And one of the things we teach at that school is perishable skills. Shooting is a perishable skill. No different than some of you folks that used to maybe play football or soccer or basketball when you're in high school. You go to try and shoot a free throw now, a little bit different. Could be a little different. Then. So same thing with shooting. If you're not practicing, it, it, it does make a difference. Now, one of the things we also love to do is enjoy that enjoy wild the game. wild game absolutely we love using our pit boss grills they've got quite a few they've got a lot of new um, seasonings out so check out the pit boss grills for a lot of their good grills we just recently got the vertical grill and i love smoker. that one the smoker so uh, people say what do you do with all that game we eat it we enjoy it we love it so that's that's a great thing is we do enjoy it in the field when we're gone and when we're at home we do and you have your cookbook I have the cookbook. So we're getting low on them from traveling. So if you want one tonight, Marsha will have it. I'll, and and uh, if, if you need to place to an order, I'll just ship it and we'll include it to you and it'll just come right $15 to you. $15 and she'll take care of you. Yes. So, Marsha, I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. you so much for coming up here tonight. All right, turkey hunting. Woo, I'm fired up. I love it. We were hunting in Tennessee last week. Marsha and I doubled on turkeys. Now, you say, what have what you been using? Well, CVA came out with a new Scout 410. Is that for turkeys? Chad, you're a big guy. You use a 12 gauge, three and a half. I'm like, absolutely. But we're promoting youth and getting more ladies out in the outdoors. And they came out with this gun. And I'm like, well, if I'm going to promote it, I want to use it and see what it'll do. Wow. I've shot a bunch of birds with it. We shot Merriam's up in Montana. Came down here, doubled. We were filming. Birds were locked up. They were hinned up. Weren't coming in. We got them to break loose that afternoon. Marsha and I were together. I'm running camera. She's got the gun. Bird pops out 30 yards. Boom, she shoots it. Hands me the gun. I hand her the camera because there's four gobblers and they didn't, weren't sure where we were at. I swung and boom, I hit one. We doubled with a 410 single shot. That is amazing. I'll just tell you that. And it, it's always fun. But I'll tell you, using that federal TSS shot, we're shooting birds at 40 yards with a 410. 40 yards it'll reach out there and it'll get them now i tell people set your decoy up where a bird can see it right now i would say and i've hunted the last couple mornings in north carolina your birds are hand up a little bit you agree with me that yeah they're hand up and sometimes the best call you can make is this one right here you ready That is so hard to do because you bought that call and you've been practicing and you want to get out there and go, <laughs> you want to pick up your slate call and you want to go, oh man, I can show this bird. I can do some tree yelp, some purr. Oh yeah, gobbler, you need to come in. Oh, I can even fight and purr. Man, you're right. Guess what? What are those hens going to do? Ooh, they're going to take the competition away. They're going to leave. So set that decoy up. you got a bird coming in so they can see it. I will tell you, yesterday morning, I roosted these birds, and they've been hitting this field. They've been strutting in the corner. They were there right before dark. They flew up and roosted. We set up. I love calling animals in. 
I've hunted turkeys all over the country. I've hunted them in Hawaii and New Zealand. And now I could say North Carolina, I made that my 18th state for taking a turkey. I like hunting turkeys. And I like calling turkeys. So we put the decoy out. And at first light, those birds pitched. And they're strutting. And some hens pitched. And I'm like, oh, this isn't good. And we sat. And we waited and waited until those come in. I'll show you the video here in a minute. What decoy to use? It depends on what your scenario is. You use a Jake, you use a hen. It depends on the season and how competitive they are. Right now, I used a hen and a Jake decoy, and we had some success with that. When a, a, a bird locks on the decoy, stay silent. That's hard to do. You want to call, you want to get him gobbling. You want that. If he's coming in, he's trying just quiet. Why? So you don't mess it up. Let them come in and let them see you. Call to locate. Now I'm going to start out. We're going to go to Montana last year. Show you some footage. Marcia is hunting Merriam's. Walker is running camera. And we're on a, a piece of property. There's no other hunters there. I don't recommend doing this when you're in an area that could have some other hunters. But I had a stuffer decoy, we called it. It was a, a gobbler that was mounted and it was built where it has a leg, peg you could stick it in the ground. Well, I had some birds that were not cooperating. So I got up there with that decoy on my belly and I started spinning him around and called Walker's running camera. Let's see what happens. These, wings are These are Merriam's. Say, Chad, what's a the Merriam's? They have the white tip on their feathers of the four subspecies of turkeys. Smoke. So Marsha shoots. But listen. Just hold it still. Walker, take the gun. I call. Walker shoots. That bird is out there. She hits it. And Walker's like, I'm not letting this bird get away. He can run. And the bird's flopping. He's like, okay, you're not going anywhere. I'm just going to finish you off. <laughs> We just got a double. Oh my goodness. Those birds were coming right in. I have not ran this new camera. Walker just said, take it, mom, it's recording. And he shot. So sorry if it was a little shaky there. Let's go check them out. <laughs> One gun, two shots, two toms. <laughs> oh, God, mom. Awesome, Walker. I, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> Isn't that awesome gun? It's a wicked little machine. I mean, we got I just shot, boom, handed it to you. You shot, boom. I don't. That's how we like it. I don't know. I didn't That's think that was. That's the first double you and I've ever gotten. Yeah, right. ever. Good ever. Stuff. We did it. Boom. <laughs> so that's the decoy we're using. I tell you what, those birds locked in on that. If you have a little movement in your decoys, I will tell you it makes a difference. We were using a, a Jake down here that you could pull the string and the fan had come up and down. That little movement will drive them insane, even better than a call sometimes. And I'll tell you, I love calling. Now, I'm going to show you some footage from yesterday. North Carolina, probably about an hour and 15 minutes from here, got invited. We were speaking there last night, and they said, Hey, Chad, you need to turkey hunt. And last year we were going to, and that didn't happen. And so we, uh, we decided to go out yesterday morning. Like I said, roosted the birds. They were coming in. And we're being quiet. And all of a sudden, you'll see it's low light. What happens? This way. I love those big old paintbrushes. Huh? Set up in a blind. I am not calling right now. Here they come, three of them. They lock onto the decoy. And all of a sudden, it comes to a race to see who can get to that decoy. Lift, he was so excited. Four ten. Now, I was hoping those two were going to come in and flog Man, it. Look at shoot, the but. hooks on him. <laughs> Big old beard. There's over 11 inch beard on him. But I didn't call. 
I'm telling you, there's a difference between calling the turkeys, and I'm just going to say it, and killing turkeys, or harvesting turkeys, if you want to be politically correct tonight. But sometimes you just have to be patient, and we're coming in. Now, you saw that bird come in, and you saw him sidestep. I know you turkey hunters were watching that. You're like, what was up with that? Well, in that same area, the youth season was last week. And they had shot a bird in that same area. And so those birds were already onto it a little bit. And so you have to know what the birds are doing when you're hunting. Take their temperature, figure out what's going on. And I knew he wasn't going to come in and put a show on for us. When you watch a bird and they do this and they start doing that sidestep, I'm just telling you, you better shoot right now because that's she's about over. They're not always going to cluck and putt and take off. The other thing is, if you're listening and you're watching and you think you're being real still and you start hearing that, <laughs> the gig is about done right there. I'm just telling you, be ready and uh, have some success out there. But I tell you, I got to hunt North Carolina. That was awesome. And I can't wait. Whew, I'll get fired up hunting those birds. Elk hunting, it's a lot of fun. I want to show you some new stuff from elk hunting. Uh, Walker, last year, uh, he was using a Bergara 280 Ackley improved rifle, and we went after a bull. Let me show you a lot of elk on this. The first light here in Montana got in the same area we were last night. Those elk stayed in the same spot. Wind's a little funny, but we're going to see if we can get in on the backside of this ridge. Wind pushes that way. I just see a few, but there's a bunch in there. Nice. Now, getting in on elk is tough. When there's a big herd, it's really tough. We went way behind the mountain. We snuck up, kept the wind in our favor. You have to keep the wind in your favor. We pop over, and there's a good herd of elk. Now, I said I'd show you a lot of elk. That's just part of the herd. They were spread out all over that hillside. Get on your hands and knees, use any cover you can. Look how we're popping into that draw. We're staying out of sight. Nice bull right there, big six point. Perfect shot. But these are tough bulls. Now look at all these elk coming. He had a few cows with him. He goes down. Yes. Boom. And that's when the real work begins right there. Big old bull, you gotta get him off the mountain. We had to quarter him up to get him out of there. But look at how heavy that rack is. That's fun. And we talked about Walker and Wyatt getting them started when they're younger. Now they're 20 and Wyatt's almost 19. And they start pushing me, Dad, let's go. Let's go, let's get up higher. I'm like, all right. But part of it is we made it fun when they were younger. Don't burn them out. If they don't want to go, don't push them. But if they want to go, give them every opportunity that, that you can. Now, hunting elk, a lot of people want to do it. you got to apply now. License deadlines are approaching. Um, a lot of the deadlines have already happened, but you can still uh, go to, like, Colorado and some places like that. But always allow yourself enough time. People say, how much time do I need? I recommend you need about 10 days if you're going to do an elk hunt to be out there and uh, really do well. You can do it in six. A lot of times people do that. And you may get it the first day. It's like anything. But elk are tough. They're like souped up whitetails sometimes getting out there. And uh, they're in some pretty rough country. And pick the season that's best for you. Now, one of the things I like to do is I like to hunt open country bulls. Later in the season, they'll move out into some of this open country. You get some snow, but you got to get stealthy. This last year, I'd seen this bull the first time in September. And he had cows with him, and it just, we couldn't make it happen. And I just hunted him, I shadowed him, and tried to make it work, and we couldn't get in close. Montana has a five-week bow season, then a five-week rifle season. First week of rifle season, it wasn't working. Finally, we got some snow, and uh, we, we went after it, and we got in there. Say, how cold is it? Well, look how frozen my beard is. About five degrees, 30 mile an hour wind. How bad 
do you want a ball? This is a nice ball. And I'm really frustrated with him because he gave me the slip the other day. We're gonna get him. How many of you have ever had a whitetail that gave you the slip and you ended up getting him? So we get out there, he's got cows around him. We laid down, I laid in the snow for two hours waiting for my shot. And the winds died down. The bull eventually fed up away from the cows, got up above them, and it was game time. He's getting up. 550 yards, 300 wind mag. There Boom. you got him. Perfect shot. He dropped him. That's what you hope for right there. Yeah, that's a long shot. That is a long shot with the wind. And that's a good bull for Montana's general season right there. That's not a special draw. That's a regular season. Big old browse on him. And uh, it was so cool to have Marsha there to pack it out for me. I really appreciate that. <laughs> she, no, she did help and, and the boys and it's a, always a team effort and it was cold and snowy, but you gotta know your gun. You gotta know your ballistics. That's very important. And uh, that's one of the things we do. I practice all the time at a thousand yards. So when you get you start practicing at long range, it makes those shots that are three and 400 yards a lot, lot more doable. And, and you gotta know your gun. I don't tell everybody, go shoot 500 yards. Know your gun, know what it'll do. There's some people practice are good to 100, 200 yards. Know what, what you're, you're capable of. And the other thing I tell people is have good equipment. We travel all over, have good gun cases. We use those Sherlock security gun cases. And then the other thing I've been doing, I've been using the Mammoth coolers because a lot of times you get these animals when it's warm. I suppose down here you get some warm weather animals too. We carry those coolers with us when we're hunting and we have them filled with ice. We can break those animals down, those elk, those deer, and get them cooled off because that venison's so good you don't want to waste any of that meat. All right, what's new from CVA this year? Well, we talked about that new muzzleloader, Paramount Pro. They also have a, another one they're coming out with in 40 cal, so there's some really good options right there. The HDR and then uh, CVA came out with some new calibers and also did a shorter barrel uh, gun called the SB version and that makes it real good when you're in ground blinds and and uh, also a good varmint gun. Now the 40 caliber I told you some of these ballistics a little earlier it's just a flat shooting gun. I'm going to show you a hunt with Walker now with his muzzleloader. Marcia was hunting with us. I'm going to just let you know a secret. She actually spotted this deer. The girl can spot. I'll it's a beautiful you. day here in central Montana. It's the general deer season. I've got the brand new CVA Paramount Pro. Thing's pretty special. It's a 40 cal, so it's a heat seeking missile. We're going to see what we can get done today. Looking for mule deer. The wind's supposed to be picking up this week, so we're going to try to get tagged out early. Let's see what happens. Big old muley bedded out in the prairie. You need a flat shooting gun. Muzzle loader also has the muzzle brake you can put on it, so it takes the recoil out. I've never seen a deer quite do this when Walker shoots. Ready? You on it? It drops, but look at that. Boop. <laughs> That's what you call stone cold dead right Got there. Reloaded with the Paramount, but uh, I don't think that's going to be necessary on this buck. Beautiful day in Montana. It's supposed to be getting real windy this week, and I uh, thought we'd get it done before the weather got bad. All right, he did an awesome job on that. Let me show you one other thing right here. Here's to the Pro Bowl. A revolution is coming. Introducing the fastest. The flattest. 405 yards. Got him. Got him. The most accurate. And the hardest hitting production muzzleloaders on the planet. Coming this spring from CVA. So they're going to be shipping those pretty soon. I tell you, we had the prototypes last year, and I've never shot a muzzleloader like that. Now, I want to sh share you, Bergara has some new things this year. They've got the new uh, Wilderness Series. They've fluted the bolts on it, a lot of great things, a lot of cool things, Cerakoted barrels, a lot of great guns out there that you can choose from. But uh, how many guns should you have? I saw a T-shirt the other day. It said, if you know how many guns you have, you don't have enough. So just think about that one right there. 
We went down to Belize this year for you fishermen in here. Marsha hooked in this barracuda, and uh, we were fly fishing for bonefish. And I tell you, it's great to get out in the outdoors. And besides the hunting this year, we also said, saw the fishing numbers. <laughs> California had over 2 million people buy fishing license last year. 2 million. Their numbers were way up. I think it was up 20-some uh, percent. So people were getting out there fishing. Now, I want to give you one more tip before we leave. You know, you never know what's going to, a day's going to bring you in the woods. And hunting out of tree stands is a great way to hunt whitetails. They're awesome. It's, it's good. You get off the ground. It helps with your scent. helps with you being able to see. But did you know this? If you hunt out of a tree stand for 20 years, there's a 1 in 50 chance you're going to fall out of a stand. Think about that. 1 in 50. Now, when you play the odds and you look at the research, and I've spent a lot of time looking at this research, if you hunt for 40 years, it's 1 in 25. So say, let's just pick a number. Say we have 400 people in here. 1 in 25, do the math. What do we got? 16 people in, out of 400 that will fall out of a tree stand. That's a lot. And it's not, not good. Now, one of the things we found that 33% of the falls were bow hunters that were hunting out of hang-on stands. Now, some of you are like, oh, I hunt out of a ladder stand. Because I was thinking, oh, ladder stands, you're not going to find a lot there. 32% of the falls were from ladder stands. You're like, oh, I thought I was safe in that. You see, this last year, I had two different buddies who were experienced hunters. One was here in North Carolina. One of them was hunting in Kansas. One of them actually was in the tree stand industry for years and talked about safety harnesses. I'm going to show you what you don't want happening during your tree stand hunts. So that's my friend on the right there. Fell out of the tree stand, broke six of his ribs, punctured his lung. And I will tell you, I always say this. Tell somebody where you're hunting. Say, well, that's my favorite secret hunting spot. Tell somebody where you're hunting so they know where to find you. Because when one of my friends fell out of his stand, the cell phone in his pocket popped out and went without reach. He couldn't get to it. And he laid there. And thankfully they found him. But I will tell you, you need to let someone know where you're at. You can put that on your phone if you have different types of phones. A find my phone and, and you can have that. You say, well, the cell coverage doesn't work. Well, then this is something to do. Tell somebody where you're at. Ping your location. Or also you can carry Garmin has these really cool... Uh, satellite transmission where you can subscribe to the service with certain GPS's and you can text off your GPS. So no matter what service you are, you can say, here's where I'm at. So if you're not back an hour after dark, they're going to come looking for you. You say, well, I'm just running late because I got a deer. Perfect. They'll help you drag it out. <laughs> so it's, it's very important to do that. Now, you see, I'm telling you this for the safety of it, but I, I also want you to think about this. Both of my friends that fell out of tree stands last year said this. They were not expecting that to happen that day. One of them had hunted Kansas for years, and he said, this is the first year I didn't punch my Kansas tag because after I fell out of that tree stand, I couldn't draw my bow or even get up there I'd broken all those ribs and and both of them broke six ribs coincidentally but I tell you you plan and you prepare for hunting season you get ready turkey season you have your gear laid out if you looked in a, in our rental vehicle right now you'd see our turkey vests are in there we got the shotgun we we plan everything's laid out I don't know about you I'm funny in my turkey vest I put everything back the same place every time when I take my mask and gloves off, that goes in this pocket. My owl calls, my crow calls go in this pocket. My slates are right here. My strikers are right here. I know where everything's at because what is it? It's usually dark when you're getting in there, getting ready. But I also want to know if I got a bird coming in and I need to switch and I need to grab my box call, I have it right here. I know where I can get that. Why? Because I planned and I prepared. Those gentlemen both planned and prepared 
for hunting season. But then the unexpected happened. You know, we don't know what's going to happen when we go out in the field. Every year there's accidents. Every year stuff happens. We don't know if we're driving down to Walmart to get groceries if somebody isn't going to pull out in front of us. We plan them for repair, but there's still that unknown and the unexpected. Tonight I tried to give you some tips and techniques to help you make you better hunters and, and help you with that, but I want to share one last thing with you. You see, we plan and prepare for all this, and I talked about using a GPS, but one of the things that I like is God's GPS. I got my camouflage Bible right here, and it tells me how to plan and prepare for what happens after I take my last breath on this earth. You see, if I could tell you where you shoot a double or triple bearded gobbler Monday morning here in North Carolina on public land guaranteed, you line up around this auditorium and say, all right, draw me the map. But I would just want to ask you if you just listen for a couple more minutes where I can tell you something more important. That's how you know you can go to heaven. Not 90% sure, not even 80% sure, but 100% sure. You see, when I get up in that tree stand, I get up there, I pull my gun up, which is already unloaded, I made sure, and then what do I do? I load it. How many have ever sat there and after about two hours, you're like, did I put something in there? Okay. Why? Because you want to be prepared. Because you don't want to hear the loudest sound in the world click when that big old deer turkey's out there. So how can you know 100% sure? Well, the, the Bible tells us we can know. First, one of my favorite verses is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You say, well, Chad, how can I know? I try to be a good person. I, I do everything I can. I try to be an ethical and legal hunter out there. I try to be nice to people, and I pay my bills. Isn't that enough? Well, let's look according to the Bible what it says and how we can go to heaven. First off, we have to realize we're a sinner. Now, the Bible says in Romans 3.10, As it is written, there's none righteous, no, not one. We're all sinners. There's None of us are perfect. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Because of our sin, we come short of being able to go to heaven unless, unless, that's why I like Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death. Now, when you go out and you work your job, they pay you a wage for something you do. And that's something that you receive for that. But you had to work for that wage. You had to do something for that. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. You deserve death because of your sin. But the gift, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, salvation is a gift. It's not something you deserve. It's a gift that you can receive. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says this. For by grace, God's grace, are ye saved. Saved from what? Saved from an eternity in hell. And that not of yourselves. It's not anything you can do on your own. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. See, it's not saying, see, you get that wage. That wage is we deserve hell. We deserve that because of our sin. But because of Jesus dying on the cross, we can go to heaven. You say, well, Chad, who can receive that gift? Romans 10, 13. For whosoever. Say, what's, what's whosoever mean? Put your name right there. For Chad, for Marcia, for Bill, for Susan, for John. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well, how do I do that? Well, here you go. Romans 10, 9. That if thou, that means that if you, shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. 
So I ask you tonight, do you know 100% sure? Have you ever accepted it? Is there a time and a place you said, yeah, I did that? Or maybe you're sitting there, I've heard that before, but I just said I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. What if you wait too long? Tonight, you have that opportunity to receive him. Now, I can tell you, I've been in car accidents before. You're driving down the road. We had someone pull out in front of us. We are going 70 miles an hour. And I can tell you, when that happens, my wife was unconscious. Thankfully, she's with us today. But I can tell you, on impact, you don't have time to pray and accept him to come into your heart. But while you're sitting here tonight, you have that time. What if you take your last breath? Are you prepared? You're prepared. You put that right lure on when you're going out and catch those big old bass. You're prepared. You check that fishing line. You're prepared. But are you prepared to meet your maker? Say, Chad, I'd like to do that. You know what? I'd love to help you tonight. I'm going to ask everybody, bow your heads, close your eyes, no one looking around. I will not embarrass you. But tonight you say, Chad, I need to receive that gift. Well, while you're sitting there, just do some business with God. He knows your heart. And quietly while you're there, why don't you ask him to come into your heart? You say, well, what, what do I say? How do I do that? Well, just while you're sitting there, pray a prayer and accept him say something like this say dear Jesus I know I'm a sinner I believe you died on the cross and rose on the third day forgive me of my sins and Lord please come into my heart thank you Jesus for coming into my heart now, I will not embarrass you nobody looking around but I want to pray for you Tonight, I'd like to pray for you if you accepted Christ. and Just lift up your hand and say, Chad, pray for me. I receive that gift. Yes, I see that hand. Anyone else? Yes, I see that hand. I see that hand in the back. Anyone else? Say, Chad, pray for me. Yes. I'm going to pray it one more time. Don't walk out of here not knowing. When I was four years old, I watched my grandpa have a massive heart attack right in front of me. Took his last breath, but I knew I was going to see him again in heaven. And that was hard for me to comprehend a lot when I was younger, but later on I realized I wasn't telling him goodbye. I was just telling him, see you later. Pray and ask him to come into your heart. Maybe say, dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I believe you died on the cross. I rose on the third day. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Thank you, Jesus, for coming into my heart. Anybody else tonight say, Chad, I just did that. Pray for me. Yes, I see that hand. Anyone else? Yes. Dear Lord, thank you for those that accepted you tonight. For Lord, that's, that's the greatest gift they can ever receive. For That's a gift that means they're going to spend eternity in heaven. Lord, I pray that they just have a peace tonight that, that passes us all understanding. I pray, Lord, that they would just tell that person that invited them. Lord, I pray that you would just... In, encourage them and if they have any questions they come see the pastor or see Pastor Doug or, or see myself or Marcia. Lord thank you for this event and thank you for heaven in your name I pray. Amen. You know there's a number of you that accepted Christ and I just want to encourage you that's the greatest thing that you can ever do. On our table we have these pamphlets there it's a story about me being charged by a grizzly bear but it also has all those verses and everything I talked about tonight. Swing by and get one. They're free. Maybe you have some friends you want to want to tell that story or share that story with. Just come by our table. You can get those uh, tonight at our table. And in a minute, not right now, but in a minute, they're going to pass out some cards. And it's going to be uh, for you being able to put in these drawings tonight for the big drawings. And it'll have your information on it. But up on that top right corner, it says, I'd like more information in the church. If you're looking for a good church, they'd love to have you visit here. And it also says, today, I accepted Christ as my Savior. If you accepted Christ, make sure you check that box so we can have a, a record of that. And we can, we can pray for you. So we'll be at the table right outside the door. You know, there's a lot of things coming up. Father's Day is coming up. A lot of people have their birthdays everything we've got the shoot straight knives tonight we have a red one and a black one they're a buck knife and we'll engrave them we'll autograph them 
We've got an engraver out there. We also put somebody's name on it or your name on it and pick those up. You can get the cookbooks pre-ordered there. And uh, we just love that you're here with us and uh, love being here. Now, they're, we're going to do a couple things. First, they're going to pass those cards out. Go ahead and pass those out. And that's, that's for these drawings. You want to get them, they're going to pass them out quick, fill them out, and then pass them in. And uh, it is so good to be here tonight. I appreciate all the folks that have been doing the sound and the video. I don't want to not thank you because that makes my life easy when I'm speaking. And it's just great being here. All right, we'll get those to you. Now, I want to tell you, while they're passing these out, get them filled out, and I'm going to share one more thing with you. And make sure you print on them. We've been at a few locations lately that it was really hard to, hard to read uh, who won, and they want to be able to tell you who won. All right, they're getting them passed out. Quick. You don't want to miss out on this Expedition crossbow, the CVA muzzleloader. Anybody needs a pen, just raise your hand. Anybody, right here, pens there. Anybody else need pens? All right, they're getting them. as you get them filled out we're going to pass them out and we're going to give you an opportunity for one more thing I promised you I'd do at the beginning thank you Marcia for all your logistics coordinating getting us here tonight good yep everybody ready to pass them in all right so we're going to get them passed in, and then they're going to collect those, and then we're going to give you one more opportunity for something special. Pass them to the ends. If you can pass them to the end of the aisles. Everybody getting them done? Okay, while they're passing them out, I'm going to do one other thing. All right, the shooting team. Where are my shooting team people at? I'm going to have you stand up right up front, right here. Any of the shooting team? They are raising money for their shooting team. Now, I will tell you, this is very important to me. These young people are out there. Isn't it awesome that there are kids that are learning these things? Isn't it great we live in America where we can have a shooting team at a school? And these kids can get out there and shoot. Now, they are trying to raise money for, for their shooting team. It costs a lot just for the ammo and for everything to do these trips. How many? All right. How many of this is your first year on the team? Anybody like that? Awesome. How many been on it? More than two or three years. Look at that. So, I promise you, and I appreciate everybody that volunteers with this, they're going to give you one more chance. I bought tickets. Why? Because I believe in this, and I know you should also. Some of you already bought them, but this is going to give you one more chance before they draw it. Now, they're giving a couple cool things away. They're giving a Stoger 20-gauge away shotgun, and they're also giving a Ruger American 6mm, or 6.5, what did I did? 6mm six, six Creedmoor. That's awesome. So, guns are hard to find right now. This is your chance. So, if you're looking for a ticket, raise your hand right now. They'll run out there. How much are they, folks? They're five dollars. 
No, one for five, five for 20. So if you want to get it, there's guys over there, run to these folks. This is going to give you the last chance. You got to fill them out quick because this helps anybody else. More over there. Somebody go over there. Anybody else didn't get them earlier? We want to make sure you have an opportunity to get that. This is awesome. We're not going to drag it out, I promise you, but there's already folks filling them out. Anybody else want one? Just raise your hand right there. There's somebody else he's holding up. Anybody else? All right. Yep, right there, that lady. Somebody get her a ticket. This guy right over here. He wants tickets right over there. Go help him out. All right. Anybody else? This is going for a good cause. Not only can you get a chance to get a gun, but this is helping this shooting team here at their Christian school. And uh, this, is, this is awesome. They compete against schools all over North Carolina, right? North Carolina? Perfect. All right, anybody else? Don't want you to miss out. One more over there. There you go. All right. So we've got the cards turned in. I appreciate everybody being here. If that's all, you guys can sit down. Thank you for helping. We just wanted to get everybody one more chance for that opportunity. You don't want to miss out. I'll be at the back table right outside the doors here with Marsha. We would love to meet you. Swing by there. I'm going to turn it over to... Who am I turning it over to? I'm turning it over to you. I was like, I'm turning it over to somebody. Thank you so much. Let's give Brother Cher a hand. Awesome. Well, we try, We switched it up this year, Anya. Instead of having just one big dinner, thought we'd play some games, have some fun. And uh, y'all did a great job outside. I'm going to very quickly uh, read off the winners for the games. And when I say your name and what you won, come down to the front and grab that very quickly. I'm not going to wait and watch you pick. You just come and get it. And it will continue on. Let's give them a hand whenever we announce their name. All right. So the long distance shot with the BB gun, the long distance, every time you hit that plate, uh, we entered your name into a drawing. And me and about four other guys out there wrote down every name, tore them in papers. We had uh, Brother Murray draw the names for us. And uh, so the first place winner for the long distance shot is Mr. Randy Monet. Where is he? Come on up, uh, Mr. Randy. You get a $25 gift card and one of the BB guns. And also, in second place for that, uh, we uh, drew Mr. Connor Bateman. Mr. Connor Bateman, where are you at? $25 gift card and a BB gun of your choice. Next was the bow and arrow shot, and the winner for the adults was Mr. Carl Rouse. You, got, you get the sling, uh, the bow and arrow, I'm sorry, and then this box and that $25 gift card. And the children, the winner of that was Mr. Makoto Hill. Mr. Makoto, come on up. You get the bow, the kid's bow and the arrows. Uh, next, for the target shooting that I was at, what's that? He does not. Um, the target shooting that I was at, in first place, we have Mr. Daniel Hardy hitting 13 shots in a row. He gets a $25 gift card and a BB gun if he wants it. And then we give a second place prize to Mr. Zach Casimir, who also gets a BB gun. He does not get a $25 gift card. Next, in the axe throwing, coming in first place with a $25 gift card and some, uh, ask Mr. Where about some axes later, it was Mr. Eric James. Mr. Eric James. Good job. Get your gift card right up here. And then coming in first place in the fishing pole cast was Emmett Rouse. Emmett Rouse. $25 gift card and a fishing pole. Good job, my man. And then second place in a fishing contest with Mr. Randy Monet. Mr. Randy Monet, come on up. You get a fishing pole as well. And that was all the competitions. Good job, everybody. Here's Mr. Lee. All right, everybody, now we have a lot of door prizes to give away. So we've got the bucket with everybody's. Everybody has filled out a card. Don't come at the end and say you didn't fill one out, okay? All right, let me go ahead and give away some of these hats real quick. So there you go, that way, that way, and 
that way, and that way, and that way. All right. Let's go ahead. You're going to help me? Thank you. Come on, Daniel, help. Oh, uh oh. I forgot the slingshot. I was wondering if I had another gift card. Slingshot, first place for the, uh, uh, that was Mr. Christian Lamas. Give him a hand. And second place was Mr. Dowdy. Mr. Dowdy, you win a slingshot of your choice down here, and you get a slingshot and a $25 gift card. That's all. And, and Christian hit four for, went four for four in that slingshot. That is incredible. All right, a lot of good stuff. So let's just go ahead and jump in. Who in here has got a big dog? Or a big cat or whatever. All right, comp compliments of Yoder's. Winner is... Hold that. Long time since last year. Eric Johns. Eric Johns. Where is it? Right here. There he is right there. All right, real quick. If you win, let's just say you win a dog leash, your name will be put back in for the drawings for the guns, okay? All right, remind me to do that, guys, okay? All right, $25 gift card to Academy goes to Ronald Berry. Ronald Berry, go ahead, take it on. Right there. Ronald Berry. All right, how about Cabela's? $75 gift card to Cabela's. What's that? Let me hook you up. This is not This is not working. Thank you. Thank you. Are we good? Wow. Okay. $75 gift card to Cabela's. Goes to Pastor JT Edwards. Look at there. There you go, right there. All right, we're gonna go. Slingshot, Earth Scent, and a Home Builder's Hoodie. Package deal goes to Cora Edwards. What? All right, hold on. Let me make sure these things are... They are mixed up, I promise you. All right. Who in here? Now, we are in East North Carolina barbecue. All right, where's the best barbecue place? We're not here to debate that, okay? Right now, it's Moore's Barbecue because they gave us some gift cards here. So, Moore's Barbecue, $25 goes to Elizabeth, whoever that is, from Raleigh, North Carolina. Who is she? Right here. There we go. Okay. All right, Guns Unlimited in Aiden. $20 gift card goes to Heather Bateman. Has anybody noticed anything on their vehicles the past few weeks? What? Pollen, okay. Greenville Auto World, $125 full detail Hand wax goes to Caleb Hill or his parents. Goes to his dad. All right. We've got a Plano. Uh, Protector Series single pistol case. No pistol inside. Goes to Denise Rouse. Right there. Okay. All right. This next one, we're going to go two life preservers, compliments of Greenville Marine, and then compliments of Hills Auction which is a 20% off of an entire purchase should you choose to purchase. If you are selling, it is a no selling fee, which is uh, equivalent of 20%. So this goes together, and that goes to Paul Hackney. 
Paul Hackney, right back in the back. There we go. All right. Oh, man. All right. Let's do a, a Masioka Clip Sense Destroying Formulation hoodie and a knife with sheath with a gut blade on. All right. Goes to Baylor Setzer. No, is that Setzer? It is now. Baylor Setzer. There we go. All right. Earth Scent Greenville Marine Cushion for your boat or your recliner goes to Dylan Evans. Right there. Dylan Evans. All right. $20 gift card to Guns Unlimited in Aiden. Jerry over there goes to the person that's holding it, Noah Kilstrom. All right. Anybody want to hold this one? This was a uh, Greenville Auto World, $125, full detail hand wax. If I say Jonathan Hagenbush. <laughs> William Connor Bateman, maybe? Stephen Bateman, there you go. Congratulations. All right, we got a mossy oak quick clean sheath here, gut hook, and a hoodie. Goes to Amanda Dale. Is she in here? There she is, Amanda Dale. All right. All right, this, let me explain this. This is from Corrective Chiropractic. So we have a mug. This is a SP Complete Dairy Free Dietary Supplement, basically a meal replacement. And how awesome is this? A massage gun. How, how awesome is that? With all the attachments. This goes to <laughs> Ryder Ledgeworth. <laughs> Give it to your mama. Yes. Yep. All right, we've got a. Who in here? I know today is April. We're in like in mid-April. Who in here made a New Year's resolution to get more healthy? <laughs> Not many people raised their hand. Here's a forty-dollar gift certificate to Champions. And it goes to <laughs> Mike Bomar. He's up top. Sound guy. There we go. All right. $25 Moore's Barbecue. Goes to Madison Mills. Where is she? There we go. All right. Earth Scent. Camouflage, coffee mug, and this is a uh, Sunday preparation. This is Pastor Butler's brother. Uh, I'm assuming this is a guitar, maybe instrumental, but he was here last week. Phenomenal job. Awesome uh, uh, guitar player. So this package right here will go to Doug Weber. All right, here we have a yellow jacket target. So great for crossbows, great for any kind of archery. Goes to y'all. I really am mixing these up. Carter Letchworth. Yeah. 
just so y'all believe me. All right, the next one. Let's give away a case right here. There we go. It is empty. Nothing is in it. Sorry, not yet. Goes to <laughs> Patricia Rice. Somewhere. Right here on the front. There we go. All right. $40 champions goes to Kenton Moyer. Where is he? There he is. Look at there. All right. We have two stadium chairs. Goes to Kelly Setzer, that way. All right, here we have an awesome prize here, two LED two-pack headlamps. Goes to Kyle Austin. All right, we have a quality tire, free oil change, and tire rotation in Aiden, quality tire out of Aiden. Goes to Daniel Rich. There we go. All right, we got a knife and a $25 gift card. Let's go that route goes to J.D. Lovelace. Wow. All right, next is a $25 Agri Supply gift card. We'll go to The person holding it, Jonathan Hagenbush. It's unbelievable. All right. How about a hundred dollar gift card? Let me hold it. <laughs> yeah. A hundred dollar gift card to Academy. All right, here we go. This is a good one now. Hundred dollar gift card to Academy. Goes to Charles May. Where? Oh, right back there. Charles, there we go. All right, $25 Moore's Barbecue. Here you go. Goes to Philip Johns. Right here. All right. Let's give away a rod. Beautiful color. That one is from Edwards Pharmacy in Aden. And that goes to Lynn Hurdle. Lynn Hurdle. All right. This one is compliments of uh, Edwards Pharmacy as well goes to Jerry Dudley. Jerry Dudley. Where are you, Jerry? Right very back. There we go. All right. Here we go. Makita, seven and a quarter circle saw, valued at $130. Compliments of Garris Evans. Zachary Casimir. All right. $25 gift card, Agra Supply. Jay.
Julie Peden. Where is she? Right over there. Julie Peden. All right, just a few more, guys. We got a $50 gift card to Ron Ayers. It's motorsports across the river. $50 goes to... Randall Monette. Randall Monette. There we go. All right. Let's uh, compliments of Greenville Marine. Spin a rod here. Goes to Keith Griffin. Right, right there. Look at there. Fishing guy already. All right. Ah, uh, well, let's go and get one more rod. This was used in the competition. And this goes to Jesse Colt. Jesse Colt, there you go. All right. We got a 150 quart cooler. That will go to, this is compliments of J.L. Brown Home Improvements. Goes to Matt Gleb. Yeah. All right. Now we've got Oh, we've got another $20 gift card to Guns Unlimited. Goes to Matt Gleb. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Rick Hagenbush. Rick Hagenbush. There we go. All right. So, we've got two big prizes left. And then we have the raffle drawings for the shooting team. This one is an Expedition Crossbow, the Viking X375. I'm going to pull from this. I'm going to put everybody's name back in it for the muzzleloader. And if we can get Chad up here, to, I'm going to let him draw for the muzzleloader. Or Marsha. You, want, you, you can draw or Chad for the muzzleloader. I was going to get Chad to just... Tell a little bit about the muzzle loader, or you can, <laughs> or Chad, or you. All right, for the expedition crossbow goes to Noah Baker. That's awesome. All right. You want to explain a little bit about the CVA, which one that is, and then we'll... Yes. All right, it's a CVA Wolf. It comes with a Kona three to nine scope. It's in the box. It's not mounting, mounted because of shipping purposes. And uh, it's 50 caliber. All you need to load it, do is load it, find yourself a deer, and you'll be eating venison fajitas. And he's making me draw this, so one person will like me a lot. All right, we're going to mix them up. Are these shuffled good? They're shuffled good. All right, there we go. So why did you just put yours on the top? No, I shuffled some more. All right. Daniel Hardy. <laughs> Daniel Hardy. Awesome. 
Good job. All right, if I can get the shooting team back up here, are these the shooting raffles? Okay. Um, yeah, just the, sh the shooting team, just to sh stand up here. All right, so the first one, do we have the guns or are they? Uh, okay, all right. So the first one we're going to draw is, was a Ruger, Amer uh, I'm sorry, the Stoke, uh, let's do the Ruger American 6 mil Creedmoor rifle first. That was the second place. There was a lot of people. Who in here bought a ticket? Shooting team, can y'all thank them for their support? That's awesome. That is fantastic. All right. Where's, uh, I'm going to let you pick. You draw the first one. And the winner of the... Uh-huh. We got that one? He is Jacob McMahon. Jacob McMahon? They don't have to be here to be pre they don't have to be present to win. So we will notify him and he should be good to go. Fantastic. All right. For the grand prize. Take that. Yeah, take that right there. Okay. This one is for the uh, Stoger. Uh, 20 gauge, 5 bronze, 3 inch, 20 gauge. This is, both of these guns are, are going to be at Greenville Marine. Steve will be back in the office on Thursday, so feel free. You will not be able to take them with you tonight. Go to Greenville Marine Thursday, talk to Steve Tugwell, and he will get you set up. Tell him you want it here. Um, you got to have it. Okay. All right. All right. And the winner of this is Jonathan Hagenbush. Very good. All right, is Pastor here? I'm going to turn it back over to Doug now, and he's going to close us out. Just, just chipped in to make this happen, donated a lot of door, the door prizes. And so could you give them a hand for all the work that they did? And uh, thank you, People's Baptist Church members, for the work and the prizes. And then um, I'd like to do this. If, if you don't have a home church or you're going to a church and they're just not preaching the truth, then, uh, man, I'd like to invite you to come over here and hear the Word of God preached in the morning and worship with us. We would sure love to have you. And uh, we're one of the friendliest churches I know of. So we would love to have you come and, and join us. And uh, if you have a home church, be faithful there and serve the Lord there. And so um, let's stand together and we'll close with a word of prayer tonight. Father, we're grateful for all that we've been able to enjoy, Lord. Thank you for our country. Thank you for our freedom. Thank you for our military men and ladies that have, have fought down through the centuries, Lord, that we could maintain our freedom. Lord, we pray for our country right now. Lord, we pray for our leadership and ask that you would give them wisdom. Lord, that you would turn their hearts toward righteousness. 
Lord, I pray that you would allow us as we leave now to leave safely. Thank you for Chad and Marcia. Give them safety as they travel tonight. Lord, thank you for their ministry and uh, taking the, their me message and the gospel around the country, Lord. And so thank you for um, all the work that went into this evening, Lord. And we ask for your, your peace and safety as we depart. In Jesus' name, amen.